In an effort to become the first man in history to summit K2 in the winter, John Snorri, Ali Sadpara, and his son Sajid joined forces, along with fellow climber J.P. Moore of Chile. John and Ali vanished on the night of February 5th near the top of K2 and were never seen again. Officially ruled dead are missing climbers Mohamed Ali Sadpara and two others who vanished earlier this month while attempting to ascend the second highest mountain in the world. But the international mountaineering community will remember Sadpara as a talented climber and as a hero in his native Pakistan. He accomplished the first ever winter ascent of Nanga Parbat, the ninth highest peak in the world, and is the only Pakistani to have scaled eight of the world's 14 tallest mountains. He and two other climbers, Juan Pablo Moore of Chile and John Snorri of Iceland, went missing on February 5th while attempting to ascend K2, the second highest peak in the world, at 8,611 meters, which is also rumored to be the deadliest. The plan was for him and his son Sajid to climb K2 without using any oxygen, which had never been done in the winter. But 300 meters from the top, at a place called the Bottleneck, commonly known as the Death Zone, Sajid had to turn round because he felt queasy. He then assisted military-led search and rescue teams as they looked for traces of his father and the two other guys on the mountain. All three climbers were pronounced dead on Thursday, formally ending the search. He added that the Army Aviation was assisting in the effort and that transferring the bodies down the mountain was very difficult due to the high altitude. Hyderi said that Snorri's body would be shifted to Iceland at his wife Lena's request. The ACP secretary said that Moore's sister and mother had also decided that his body would be brought back to Chile. Talking to Dawn.com, Mushtaq Met, the base camp manager of Mashabum Expeditions, Treks and Tours, Pakistan, and the Madison Mountaineering K2 Expedition 2021, said that around 11 a.m. today, the Met Nepalese Sherpa rope-fixing team found the first body 400 meters above Camp 4, which was Moore's. Why summit K2 without oxygen? One explanation is that he was obediently carrying out the terms of the contract he had made with John Snorri while serving as a high-altitude porter for him. But according to Nisar Abbas, that was only a deception. A few weeks prior, Sadpara had publicly stated his desire to do the climb after a 10-person Nepalese team, commanded by the renowned Nirmal Purja, became the first to summit K2 during the winter. Sadpara wanted to do it as well in order to break a record, but without oxygen. Additionally, he wanted his son to be present when it occurred. His son Sajid informed the media that the group had initially included between 25 and 30 local and foreign climbers, but that everyone had turned around before reaching the 8,000 meter mark. Sajid's own condition worsened when they hit the bottleneck. In our emergency supplies, we had an oxygen cylinder. My father instructed me to remove some and use it. It will improve my mood. However, the cylinder's mask regulator leaked as Sajid was assembling it. The two foreigners and his father kept scaling the bottleneck in the meantime. Then his father turned around and yelled for Sajid to continue climbing. I yelled about the leaking cylinder. Don't worry, just keep going up, you'll feel better, he advised. But I couldn't muster the strength, so I made the decision to back away. It was Friday around noon. I last saw them doing that. Sajid responded when asked why Sadpara insisted on continuing. The Nepalese had done it weeks earlier. And also, he wanted to do it too, because K2 is our mountain. What could have happened? Sajid has stated he saw the three men climb over the bottleneck at the top, which means they probably made it to the summit. Experts say most accidents happen while descending, as even a slight loss of balance can send one crashing down into an abyss. Those who knew Sadpara doubt he would have made such an error. People in his village still recall more than one occasion when a goat Sadpara was tending the mountains got injured, and instead of slitting its throat, as others would, he'd haul it over his shoulders and walk all the way down to take it to the village vet. They suspect he probably failed to make it back because one or both of his partners met with an accident, and he stayed trying to find a way to save them. We'll probably never know. People in the area had been awaiting a miracle, but given the hostile environment, low oxygen, and winter temperatures dipping to as low as minus 80 degrees C, there's little chance the men could have survived a week at over 8,000 meters, his son said. This hasn't happened in climbing history, so we can only hope for a miracle. 
Sajid Sadpara told the BBC earlier. On Thursday, after his father's death was officially declared, Sajid vowed to continue following in his footsteps. To all the climbers who look up to him, I promise I will carry on his dreams and mission and continue to walk in his footsteps. The team found the second body when they were 300 meters away from the bottleneck. They were able to identify it as Sadpara. Another 100 meters away, they found Snorri's body. He further said that Ali Sadpara's son, Sajid Sadpara, is currently at Camp 4 and will be guided by the rope-fixing team to his father's body tomorrow morning. Sajid had earlier launched an expedition to retrieve the bodies of the three climbers. Canadian filmmakers Elia Saikali and Pasang Kaji Sherpa accompanied him. Ali Sadpara had gone missing along with his two climbing partners, Snorri and Moore, while attempting to climb K2, the world's second highest peak, at 8,611 meters. They were last observed on February 5th while attempting to climb Savage Mountain at the bottleneck on K2. The oxygen regulator of Sajid Sadpara, who was with the three, broke down, forcing him to abandon his summit attempt and return to Camp 3. Sadpara, who grew up in the village of Sadpara in the Porturing community in the Skardu region, once explained the financial dynamics that drove many to the mountains to carry loads for foreign expeditions, but few to climb in their own right. Many climb for money, which isn't that much, but it sustains people. However, not many of my fellow porters want to climb. If they had better opportunities, they would quit climbing, he said. Honestly, if you ask me, I would not want my children to work in this field. My sons are studying. One of them is in college and has simply refused to climb. I want to be able to earn enough to provide for my family. While helicopters have been searching the mountain's upper reaches for the three, Pakistani media has followed the efforts with almost hourly updates, and social media users have posted their hopes for a rescue despite the dwindling odds. Among those still hoping for his safe return was the writer Fatima Bhutto, who tweeted on Monday, hoping so much for Ali Sadpara's safe return. After days of search efforts that included the use of Pakistan army helicopters, satellite imagery, and SAR technology, the three climbers were officially declared dead on February 18. K2 was the only peak above 8,000 meters that had never been ascended in the winter until 2021, and it was on many mountaineers' radars. Ali Sadpara was the first mountaineer from Pakistan to have scaled eight of the world's 14 highest peaks above 8,000 meters, and to have made Nanga Parbat's first ever winter ascent. Apart from Sadpara, Snorri and more, mountaineers Atanas Skatov and Sergei Mingale Moreno also attempted the K2 winter summit this year, but lost their lives there. Following Sadpara's death, the Gilgit Baltistan government announced 3 million rupees for his family and a suitable job for his son. It also approved the establishment of the Muhammad Ali Sadpara Institute of Adventure Sports, Mountaineering and Rock Climbing in recognition of his services. The government also nominated Ali Sadpara for the highest national civil award. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed today's video then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to always be updated with the most excellent content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.